sequences and tables are a bit like my teenage dating years. I thought things were going great, but there was never really any chance of a relationship. How do I find which sequences are bound to a table? I was expecting table name column on user sequences or something similar, but I couldn't find it. Let me explain that with a demo. There might be a link between sequences and tables, or there might not be. And let's explore both options. Let's create a sequence attractively named blah. I'll create a table called T1, and I'll have my X defaults to blah.nextfile. That's a really cool thing that came in as in 12.c, the ability to have a sequence as a default for a column. If I go look at user tables, this is just the user table columns printed down the screen for T1, there's really nothing in there. There's no column called sequence name. So there's nothing in user tables that says that this sequence is somehow bound to a table. Conversely, if I flip the query around and go look at user sequences, you'll see that there's nothing in here that says it's bound to a particular table name. And that's because by default, a normal sequence and a table, even if you use them in this default context, don't have any real binding together because I can create another table called T2 or a table called T3. They can also reference the sequence as well. It's one to many. There's no real relationship here. I can use this sequence just with a query. I don't have to use it in just the default operation. If I insert into T2, I've now got an active transaction that used that sequence. I can select from T2 and went and picked up sequence value one, which is fine. That transaction is still open. So my sequence was just used. I'm in an active transaction and I can drop it. Doesn't make any difference. It doesn't break anything. I haven't blocked anything that that transaction got committed. One thing that will happen though, is if I try to insert into T3, it's gonna say, ah, oh, I need to get blah.nextfile, that sequence doesn't exist. So it stops you from doing inserts where you needed to use the default. If I didn't use the default, for example, T2, if I nominated a value, didn't use the default, then it works fine. But you can see it's a fairly loose coupling between sequences and tables. And that's why we don't bind them together in this default mechanism of sequences. The one time when we do bind them together is if you use this new generated as identity. This is effectively Oracle's mimicking of what you see in things like SQL Server and other databases where they've had the identity column for a number of versions. We, this for us came in in Oracle 12. Under the covers, we're building a sequence to implement this. It's just a ascending number. But because we're doing it under the covers, it's internal, we manage that relationship between the two. If I go look at user tables, there is one column that says that, yes, this has an identity column associated with it, which is this one. So you can only have one identity column for a table. This table has one. How do we implement it? We implement it with a sequence. How do we know the relationship between them? If I go look at the object ID for this table, it's 6494157. The sequence that gets created is I seek dollar dollar followed by the object ID. If I try drop it, I can't drop it anymore because it's now bound to the table. It's being used for identity. So this particular sequence, because it's an identity sequence, is now known to the database that it's linked to the table and therefore you can't just go ahead and drop it like I dropped my sequence called blah. If I go look at user sequences though, there's nothing on there that says that this is somehow linked to a table. Now that you know the sort of naming convention, you'll know, ah, oh, that's obviously some sort of special sequence. But if I have a normal sequence called blah, which I've just recreated because I dropped it before, how would I tell between these two sequences? How do I know that's an internal one besides a special name? Well, the only really way you can see is by hunting around in one of the internal dictionary tables called sys.seek$. And there's a flags column. And for these ones, you can see there's an extra 32, which is the fifth bit. So there's a bit string here or bit flag that's been set for an identity sequence. But really, we shouldn't have to go hunting around, you know, deep in the data dictionary to find this out. Uh, hopefully, we'll add something in there besides just the identity column on user tables. There's nothing to stop you from creating your own sequence with that name. I would strongly not recommend that because eventually, you will come up to this object ID. The database doesn't know you created a sequence like this. And you'll create a, a table, say has identity. The database will use an object ID of 77710036. It'll try to create this sequence and you'll get an internal error and your table doesn't get created. 
So be aware of that. Um, I did a, did a play with this to actually you know, create a, a 10,000 sequence to see what would happen. And yeah, you simply can't create a table with that identity once you hit that object number, which is why I'm dropping it now so I don't mess up my database. Yeah, you only get the linkage for identity sequences, not for standard sequences, but that's the correct thing because a standard sequence can be used for any number of tables or no tables at all. And as I said, whatever you do, don't name a sequence I seek dollar dollar NNNN. We don't stop you. I wish we would. But if you uh, inadvertently ended up with a object number collision, then you'd be in trouble.